Today we'll be breaking down several projects out there that could completely explode. Make sure and stay around for all of it. We'll get into the details. You don't want to miss it. Before we get started, my name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's thank our sponsor, and that is Tangem. If you guys are looking at self-custody and you want to do it in a cool way, well, guess what? You can do it with a cocky new card. And that's right. You can get your own Tangem wallet right there on your favorite different branded project out there. There's some limited editions out there, but if you do want to go over to the website, just jump over to Tangem.com. You'll get into it. Check it out. This is one of the most secure uh, wallets out there, and, of course, it works, uh, I think, very elegantly with the app itself, and it's a super cool solution. All you have to do is hit the Get Tangem, get the three cards set, and you're off and running. You can start your self-custody journey, get your tokens off exchanges, put them in your own wallet, and get going. All right, I want to play this first clip, which gets into the Vanek CEO. That's right, the Vanek CEO talking about alternative projects. Listen in. And, and frankly, I think uh, both this Bitcoin and ETH miss the most important uh, story of 2023, which people know, but I don't think they focus on enough, which is simply that uh, transaction costs are now available at affordable rates through Solana or the so-called layer twos. Because you see the transaction fees for Bitcoin and Ethereum, no one would ever use that database to build anything on, right? Would you want to fill your car of fifty dollars, you know, week after week, and then one week of six hundred dollars, you know, and that's effectively what high gas fees are on Ethereum. I think just focusing on those two, and sorry, that's where we're at in the United States, so it's natural. But the most interesting thing happening in crypto to me right now is that you have databases that can scale, that can take a lot of users at a high uptime and now have predictable costs. So are you, are you maybe saying that we're putting maybe a little bit too much focus on the Bitcoin ETF when we're looking at what could be driving price movement in the markets? I think so. It's time to move yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is good because that obviously being the Venex CEO, not that that's a big thing, but I think it's interesting because it does get, you know, kind of Main Street, Wall Street involved in layer twos and kind of the explosion of gasless transactions. Part of this has really started to evolve, obviously, off of the Dencon upgrade on Ethereum to moving into some of these projects, Base being one of them. If you look at just daily performance here on transactions with Base, you see the explosion, mainly because Base was one of the first projects on layer two to really go in and implement low fees. And I've got a clip here that kind of goes into what BASE has been doing. This is Jesse, Jesse Pollack breaking down a little bit more about scale. Listen in. Coinbase has like 100 million users. And I'd imagine in a full-blown bull market, it will get insane on BASE. Like there's going to be a lot of people wanting to, to transact on it. What, what are you guys' plans to like scale it up? The demand on BASE grew very precipitously. <laughs> so we, we 5X the number of transactions on BASE basically overnight. The, the easiest way to think about this is, is using this uh, term called like a gas target, which is basically the total amount of computation that BASE can do in a second. Our target uh, today is 2.5 million gas a second. So that means we can process 2.5 million gas. Um, that comes out to about like 25, 40 transactions per block. And so what we've been seeing is we've actually been seeing more than that. And when you have more than that target, what happens is basically the price of fees goes up and up and up and up. So today we're at 2.5 million gas a second. And our medium term goal is 400x that. So a thousand million gas a second or one giga gas a second. What I'm currently kind of challenging the team to think about is can we do 400 X in 400 days? And so that would get us from where we are today to one giga gas a second of throughput by on-chain summer three, which will be in 2025. All right. So he said some very interesting things. There's, that was Jesse Pollack uh, doing the interviewing uh, there. But the point is, is that they're trying to forex the potential of scale on base. And what that means, if you look, go back and look at on-chain summer, this of course was the last project that they did. There was a lot of active projects within it and many of which you'll recognize, many like Parallel, FWB, there's another block music platform, Coke, you know, Stand With Crypto, uh, many, Blackbird, which was the restaurant product. So my point is, is that there's a lot of partnerships that are gonna start to move into this, especially remember he said on-chain summer three, this was on chain summer one that I'm showing you right now. 
So when is on-chain summer two? Well, let's go back over here and we'll look at Dune Analytics here on campaign revenues of all time, because this thing skyrocketed back here. And if you notice something, let me kind of zoom in on this for you guys. You'll notice this date right here, August 8th. Notice that, Coke, parallel, base, another block, etc. August 8th could be the date for on-chain summer too. So that's coming up here soon. And base, of course, has already started moving into a ton of not only meme projects, but others that I think are gonna start integrating in to what's happening with base and obviously gasless uh, scenarios. One more note is if you guys remember bridging during on-chain summer, that was a little bit on-chain summer, that was a little bit difficult. Now it's much more seamless and very inexpensive to be able to do that. So that in itself has made it much easier to do that on base. So all of this is moving in the right direction. And I think, you know, especially when you look at lower gas fees and back to the Van X CEO, everybody's starting to get this. And now you're starting to see these early adopters coming in, whether it's meme projects or other projects that are going to start moving in this direction. I want to go to another clip this because this will get into layer threes on base. Listen to uh, and one of the things that we're really excited about on base is what's called layer threes. The, the easiest way to think about it is, is kind of, it's just a server that a business runs for their app, but it's an interconnected server that, that's connected to the on-chain economy. So now you kind of plug it in to the L2 on base. Now you get your own dedicated block space, just like as if you were running your own AWS, your own data center. It's all yours. You don't have to worry about congestion, but you can use the user's identity from on-chain. You can bring their assets into that and it all just works. So this will be, I think, one of the biggest advancements that BASE is going to be able to roll out because it's going to start applying utility across all sorts of different industries and businesses and opportunities, maybe even outside the Web3 space for those who are really catchy and understand what's happening. If you look at DGEN, this is a good example. DGEN uh, tipping is now live on Supercast. Uh, big thanks to the team over there. Future, fantastic. To allocate tips in one go. Also, they're going to be upgrading the back end for faster tip allocation. This, of course, is another example of these kinds of rollouts. DGEN, if you look at the explosion that we had on DGEN, the interesting thing here with DGEN, this token, is that the transactions mirror a lot of the price because this is a price and transaction comparison. But if you'll notice here, transaction mirroring a lot of the price. That's another benefit that a lot of this goes into. DGEN, if you look at the coin market cap, chart real quick just to give you it's a little late on this one so don't go running out and getting degen but I'm, i am going to share with you some projects that could be big winners that we're watching very closely that i'll get into but this is a good example of of what we're getting into with um with base now others to consider right now obviously is base ng let me kind of zoom in on this proud to share that the native base project we've had our uh they're now verified on coinbase wallet so you can get to base ng over there if you're in your Coinbase wallet and you're trying to do that, make sure you get ETH on base. It's fairly easy to transact to get it done, whether you have a Coinbase account or you want to do it almost uh, on direct onboard. But that'll, that'll get you some ETH in your wallet and then boom, in, ba on base so that you can be able to go in and, and do these kind of trades. So base NG is one I'm watching uh, very closely. So showing up a verified on the swap screen, I think that will probably uh, explode this project uh, right now that you can kind of see what it's going to look like out there. So that's another one. All right, so if you look at some of the things that are happening out there, this is Base Engine Official, just a vibrant community. I mean, they're doing some interesting things out there. The point is, is it's active. That's the advantage you got to look at. Another one I want you to take a look at, which is Mochi. Now, Mochi on Base is another one. This is named after, remember Brian Armstrong? This is his cat. So I know this is getting crazy, guys. But the point is, is they're having fun. This is how projects start to roll out. Who knows what kind of partnerships these things will start to develop, especially when, in, when we get into many more projects they're gonna start going out into layer three, which I think is gonna be interesting. If you look at Moochie uh, or Mochi out there right now, this is the all time. So it's starting to move up a little bit of a dip here. So this might be a good entry point right now. If you take a look at the seven day, a little bit of a movement up here, this might be an opportunity. So this is one I'm watching as well. I wanna go over to another clip that kind of breaks into a little bit more around where all this direction is heading. And that is the smart wallet. Smart wallet could be maybe the holy grail of how we will see layer two really come to fruit. Listen in. The third is wallets. And this is uh, one that I think all of us have felt some level of frustration around for the last many years. Uh, yeah. I like to say that whenever I onboard a new friend to crypto right now, I have to sit them down and give them the talk, which is like, <laughs> okay, now you've brought $1,000 or whatever it is into your wallet. 
Like, don't f*** it up. Like, we are not going to onboard a billion people if every single time they bring money on chain, someone has to give them the talk. And what we announced and, and Coinbase launched um, about a month ago at ETH Denver is what they're calling the smart wallet. Um, w did you say when that goes live, the, the smart wallet? Yeah, so they, they la launched the test net in like end of February. And then in terms of mainnet, uh, don't have an exact timeline, but it's measured in weeks right now. Weeks. Uh, so we're, we're not far. Um, it's coming soon. Coming so you're soon. You're saying in, in a couple weeks, potentially a month, I'll be able to go use this smart wallet and start transacting with it on chain. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be here before on chain summer. All right. So if that's happening, timeline, just kind of put the timeline pieces together here. If that's happening much faster, this, of course, we recorded just the other day. A couple of weeks out, we get a smart wallet. Most likely, could we get an advancement on the date? Remember, it started August 8th, 8 8, remember, 8 8, very interesting. Uh, that, of course, could advance forward. So I'm looking for some interesting dates right here. I'm thinking 7 7, you know, there could be many that we need to look at. Good lucky numbers. Uh, anyway, I want to go over to other things that are happening in the space around not only NFTs, but just in how regulatory alignment is going to look. This first is Christ Christopher Perkins. He's now serving on the CFTC Global Markets Advisory. Uh, over the last few months, we formed a working group to put forth recommendations on NFTs. Uh, that's a big deal because right now, this, of course, is the president of Coin Fund and part of the digital assets uh, group out there as well, which is the digital chamber that are working in this. Now, if you look at some of the things that are going on in this direction with digital chamber, non-fungible token, education, emerging practices, this is the call for public comment. Now, this is something that is important. If you're watching our video right now, first thing I'd ask you to do is hit like, you know, because this is going to give you some education around layer twos, NFTs, obviously these meme projects, but go over here to digitalchamber.org and NFT comments and go in and just read the paper and then you can actually go in and start commenting on this. So just leave a reply, put your name and email, all that good stuff, and post a comment. You know, get in there and do it, man. Use some ChatGPT or some Claude. And get out there and, and knock it down for uh, comments. Other news that could really play into this, of course, Sui announced their breaking announcement on stage from Sui Basecamp. This, of course, is Playtron. Think of this simply as a Steam Deck for Web3. It's that simple. So all the Web3 games that have to circumvent, you know, the App Store and the Google Play Store and all the problems that we're dealing with in the Web2 world, here is another alternative. Just think of it as a new destination, you know, for games. Think of a browser, mobile, apps, console. Well, this is Steam Deck. This is that kind of concept. So imagine if this could be done, not only with chains, but starting to move into partnerships with things like Avalanche and others out there. So this is another one that I think will be very, very uh, big for, obviously, for Web3. And listen, guys, it's just beginning. Right here's Playtron. Go to their website. Go to their Twitter account. Check them out. Brand new, kind of getting going on this. So I think this could be one of those that is definitely uh, heading over to maybe revolutionize Web3 gaming, which is a big part of this, especially for in-gaming. Uh, in-game assets, NFTs, all that kind of stuff. So if you're brand new to crypto, maybe you're first time here at our channel, hopefully you're going to go back and look at some uh, Web3 gaming episodes, look at some episodes on Layer 2s, understand a little bit more about the ecosystem, start getting immersed in this, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're not in our Diamond Circle, make sure and get in that. We'll send you an email. It helps you kind of develop your crypto journey and really understanding blockchain as a whole and how big this market opportunity is. Follow me on X, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.